We love content. <laughs> we love content. Love content. Hi, um, I'm Felicia Reyes, uh, one half of Let's Get Weird, which is a uh, brand strategy and culture studio. I specialize in, you know, branding and uh, visual creative, and I'm also a professor at Parsons. Uh, I am Anita Chordia. I'm the other half of Let's Get Weird. And my experience uh, runs through a variety of things within marketing and communications from ad sales, public relations, event marketing, fundraising, experiential, and brand strategy. What is content? It was a question to us. Yes, it is. <laughs> what is content? For me personally, content is something I'm intaking. It could be a recipe. It could be a cooking video. It could be uh, some weird oddball piece. It could be something developed with AI. It could be a talk piece. It could be reality TV, even just a piece around what's happening around the world. <laughs> you know, I thought a lot about this and just thinking about coming here today. Um, what the hell is content? What is this, you know, one piece I will pull out as my example of such a thing? Um, I think consumption is definitely a big part of it, but I think it's sort of like the digital, it's like the term that we had to create in order to, to uh, give a label to just like this digital communication age, because it can be so many things. Do, do either of you feel like, um the word content resonates with you as a descriptor of something that you produce? Yes. Oh, I would say yes and no. Of course, what I produce is content, but, you know, is it play on word? Am I content with it? <laughs> and <laughs> I also believe what we produce is beyond content because it's sometimes content can be considered fleeting and things that uh, let's get weird is trying to build is something hopefully that lasts beyond a cycle. That word gets put on it, right? This is content. But to Anita's point, my hope is that, you know, it's art, it's freedom, it's expression, it's information, but eventually ends up in a bucket of content. Hi, and thank you for calling. Our office hours are Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Please leave a message after the tone, and we will return your call as soon as possible. Is that content? It certainly can be. It certainly is right now in this moment. <laughs> yeah, I think it can be because this is just a baseline, right? This is just something you've come accustomed to, something you even forget exists most of the time. But I mean, it can be in the form of the voice, the accent, even what has been scripted. So it can be. What conditions do you think would need to be met in order for this to be considered content? I, I think the moment it's sort of taken out of context, right? Because like, this is something informative, Usually it happens, I mean, it happens on a grand scale, but in the moment it happens generally like intimately where it's like you're on the phone or something and you hear this thing, even though it's made for like, you know, everyone who calls. So I feel like in that instance, it's just sort of information and in, under the umbrella of like customer service, mm -hmm. but taken out of context, it suddenly becomes this thing that we are analyzing and thinking about now. And I think that <laughs> sort of switches it's meaning, you know? And, you know, I have to admit, I saw it first this, this morning on, you know, T Magazine that, um, so, you know, this is by no means is obscure and hidden in some ways. I think this is an artist that they're highlighting, um, Joelle Hernandez. 
had a really hard time deciding what piece of content I was going to bring today because that piece of content almost became this thing that was going to like define me in some way right like I don't know who's going to see this if anyone's going to see this I don't know this is our first time meeting these people you know hi everyone um so what is the thing that I bring that like represents my consumption which is so crazy it became like this whole um sort of existential thing um and so I tried to not think about it too much. I I think it's obvious what makes this cool, but um, you know, let's let's break it down. What makes this cool content? Well, just from that first from that scroll scrolling perspective and all the other things I was sort of seeing on my feed, this became a sudden calm. Um there was it's obviously super bizarre. It's like these huge eyes and they have these bodies that are like awkwardly cuddling on this couch and you know the scene is beautiful it feels very graphic the way the furniture is angled um the type of art that's in the background the colors that are used it's just really stunning and gorgeous and a little mm -hmm. just weird um and then it also just feels like such a story like what the hell's going on here but this is the kind of thing that to me feels different from all the other noise out there and that to me started to find not only what's content but also what's good or interesting content so I saw this too and that's why I got so excited because I too was like in my morning scroll was like I, I want to follow this person I'm intrigued I I there's so many questions I have about this I, I'm I like the background of this person pulling from their culture, paper mache, what does that mean? You know, I remember that in elementary school too. So like, to me, there's a, 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 a many different things here because one, it's pulling from their culture, but they're, they're expanding on it in a manner that obviously gives anybody uh, appreciation for work pro tip and the absurdity uh, you know the fact that the eyebrows and eyes don't move but yet there's something that you're taking in whether you're filling in the gaps with regards to emotion or just you know thinking about it for yourself putting yourself in that place and even a lack of gender here like I I don't know what gender this these two people could be obviously they are cuddly they're cozy but there's so many layers of question that just this five seconds of whatever this is with the color green and the yellow and the blue and that background everything makes you stop in your place pro tip uh one thing that joel hernandez does really well is you know, essentially these are paper mache, mache sculptures and masks. And it's really what it's doing. It's essentially sharing their art, but also providing an entire environment around it and then creating all of these little vignettes and videos. Like if you look at their page, there's just a ton of them and they're just so beautiful. And it gives you another dimension to just you know, the sculpture themselves. It's like the whole world that they start to create. Pro tip. Uh, bring us into your world. Um, show us the multi-dimensions multi-dimension, that something can live in, not just the thing it is, right? What, what else is sort of surrounding it that provides more of an atmosphere that separates this from, you know, other, other things, you know, alongside it? Photography is really good too, but it feels like this is like very conscious of being shared on social media and trying to reach the audience there in a way that makes sense to the platform. Oh my God. Most hilarious use of type. <laughs> what, what are you talking about? Hilarious, I meant this. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna play a game. I'm gonna show you two posts um, one from Martha Stewart and one from Carrot Top, but I have the accounts blacked out. Mm -hmm. And at the end, you have to decide which one posted which. So yeah. one of these is from Martha Stewart and one of these is from Carrot Top. All 
right. Okay. And by Carrot Top, we're talking about the comedian with the big red hair, correct? Yes. He's Carrot Top, 1994 Comedian of the Year. Got it. This was posted on December 1st, 2023. So recently, who posted the dress on December 1st, 2023? And the second one is here. Thanks for all the birthday wishes, love, and gifts. Happy birthday to me and the dress. Who posted it? So good. The funny part is, is that this is actually hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's legit. I mean, I thought I knew. I think I still know. I think I know. You want to take a guess? The dress post is Ms. Stewart. Happy birthday to me is Carrot Top. Felicia, do you agree? I'm going to say they're both Carrot Top. Ooh. Ooh. Accusing me of trickery. I didn't know. <laughs> is that an option? I don't know. That's, yeah. that's kind of what my gut told me. <laughs> this is the answer. Anita, you were right. Winner. <laughs> I also follow Martha Stewart, so. Okay, but why does she have two accounts? Because there's like Martha Stewart and Martha Stewart 48. And I was like, is this a number? Like, does she have a Finsta? Well, I'm, you know, this is so tough because... I'm a content cre like collector. I love collecting Ooh. content. So even while Felicia was showing us the Joel Herand Herand Hernandez uh, work, it made me think of an Indian artist similar of that vein. And I like had to look that up. It also made me think of this other artist that I saw at the Venice Biennale in 2017. So all of a sudden it just moved and moved and moved. So like her inspiration took me to three other places in the five minutes that we're discussing it. So I'm now at top five. I think where I wanna go at this moment, ooh, this is tough, as Felicia put it, the fans. Will the fans, will the fans understand where I'm going? But this is the one that I'm sharing for today just because it's the most recent piece that I've, interacted with and this is just a trailer to a oscar nominated animated short whoa oh this is gorgeous yeah and arresting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Very much. I just want to, I want to watch the whole film immediately. Yes. I highly recommend it. And it's beautiful. Obviously it was absolutely beautiful. And the concept of clothes, the concept of uh, the idea of a uniform, a hijab being in Iran at a certain timeline. I think there's just like a lot of components that are just so Amazing. This is one of my favorite parts. We friends of, of ours were talking about it. How the teachers on the measuring tape trying to move the hijab front to back to cover the hair. Oh, that's such a like a specific and kind of re like really relatable moment. Like this is a universally universally relatable moment, even for people who don't come from a culture that wears a hijab like the idea of the student having to be properly attired and it not quite working um i didn't go to school with uniforms but i have many relatives and cousins who have and uh that idea of like you only wear this one thing every day until a certain point in your life and then what does that mean afterwards or what does that mean after school or what does that mean in other than those eight hours five days a week of your life and so like that it attracted me to it and then personally the idea that this canvas is close and everything they're doing with regards to this animation is around clothing 
And that's really neat because it's it's going bigger than the idea of the uniform, what happens before, after, et cetera. But they're using this as their whole fact form factor and space of like what clothes mean to people, how does that work, and um what did it mean to this particular person telling the story? And then obviously the social, political, environmental components that come with it. I just have to point out these little um, co-hosts. Oh, yeah. The the materiality of it is so right for the tone, the subject matter. I've never seen anything exactly like this before. Like, this is, this is beautiful. Yeah, the other thing I would say is, like, proportions are really unusual in this, too. And I appreciate that as well. Like, in the opening scene, it has the similar piece like that, where something's wider on the bottom. I mean, even just seeing obviously only 30 seconds of this um, absolute intrigue and seeing more, of course, and it's just so beautiful and reading just the blurb about it, about this being on a uniform as someone who did grow up wearing a uniform and, um, you know, being in a school with nuns and measuring skirts and all of those pieces, like definitely relatable in that sense. Um the sound design is also like definitely gets at your guts, which is beautiful. I think mm -hmm. giving character to essentially a collection of inanimate objects and making them feel so alive is really well done. I mean, again, it's like culture, right? Like be proud of who you are, where you may have come from. I think, you know, for me personally, uh, what, uh, what is my term now? A third culture kid. Um, it it's kind of unusual to have two sides of growing up partially uh, in India, growing up in the United States, but really being American at the end of the day. And uh, um, what does that mean to also be Indian? And uh, for me, like I think I resonate towards pieces of work like this because these individuals have figured it out in a way I think as a child I wasn't sure what side to be on and even now just still sorting out like what does it mean for me to have so much lovely amazing influence by so many wonderful things that I've come across. I think a big learning is using what you got. Pro tip but also it's just a different way to look at telling a story or creating a piece of art slash content using unusual materials. Like there's no amount of, you know, data or AI generation that would come up with this execution. Mm. This is something that's genuinely sort of comes out of whatever it is that inspires individuals and allows for different people to have their own points of view. So just use what you got. You don't need anything outside of sort of what you already have to at least create and begin something. Using what you got and not trying to use what you don't got. Let's use what's authentically ours to use. And, you know, if people don't get it, they don't get it. I just want to talk about Nanolan. This is like an actual children's show from like, but they've got, like they're like viral on social media right now. Like everybody's fucking obsessed with Nanolan and for good reason. But um, like, look how many followers they have on TikTok. They gear all their content for adults. Hey birdie. That's okay birdie. And that's it. Like the the <laughs> amount of times that I've I've watched this and I still get like emotional. And then there's the other side of this one. <laughs> Stuck in there. <laughs> Rester, this is Bobby Billy. You know I watch it every day. It's the best video, Rester. Yeah. And it's like it's just clips like that from this children's show.
that are just going bananas on TikTok and Instagram with people our age. I have no interest in having kids. <laughs> it's just like, oh, I need to watch this 10 times. But we we are those kids, right? Like each each of our pieces had some form of nostalgia mm. um, or something of like an artifact of childhood or reflection. Pro tip. And there really is something to it. Like, um, mm. are we constantly in search of that little birdie, which is our inner child and, you know, uh, making, bringing them joy, bringing them delight. Do you have any thoughts about that sort of desire to reconnect with those feelings through the consumption of content? I think in a, in a way, yes. And I can say that because it's been very front of mind for me personally, like figuring out like, you know, being an adult with freedom and having sort of my own life, what does that look like? And what artifacts am I leaving behind? All of these things. So in thinking of that, and then being drawn to certain pieces that exist out into the world, it feels just like if it's an algorithm, if it's a sign and connection, who knows what it is, but there's a, some sort of connection and symmetry sort of happening there that feels, at least for me, like, if this is branding and if this is an algorithm, like, fuck, you got me, you know, like, <laughs> score. Want to join the Cool Content Club? Send a self-addressed stamped envelope to Extra Crispy, 840 Broadway, 3rd Floor, Brooklyn, New York, 11206. Or just comment on this video. The Cool Content Club is filmed before a live studio audience. No animals were harmed in the making of this Zoom call.